So originally, I was going to make a completely different video to get back into YouTube content. And originally, that video was going to come out last year, but uh, that didn't work out. Also, it would have made more sense if this one came out before the Community Day video, but uh, that one was shorter and it didn't need as much editing, so yeah. Also, I considered making a video for Porygon Calm Day Classic, but considering it's like negative degrees outside and snowing and all that stuff, no. For a Pokemon I deleted Shinies of, absolutely not. That's life though, ain't it? Sometimes things don't work out the way you think they will, but the work was done and I'll admit that I think that it'd be a shame for it to go to waste. So instead, I decided to recap some of the things I made throughout 2023 that I'm proud of. So what's up everyone, Sombra Malamut here and talking about things I like about my art is hard. For anyone who knows me, it's pretty blatantly obvious that I don't always like what I make. I don't even always like the process of creation. I don't even really like that art is my main skill in life. Art is often romanticized by artists and patrons alike as somewhat of this therapeutic or pseudo-spiritual practice, something that you do to get in touch with your emotions, or a tool to spread some kind of message, or something to just release energy by creating. I don't really feel any of that. Maybe at one point I did. When I was a kid, I had a lot of fun drawing. I just made whatever I wanted and people kept encouraging me to keep drawing, but the moment that I decided I wanted to make a career out of it, things kind of went downhill. I went through a long period where I just didn't want to make anything anymore. Like, I wanted to just give up drawing, sewing, all forms of creating. My goal has been to become some kind of professional artist and well, it wasn't happening. I'm nearly a decade out from graduating college and I haven't been able to make anything happen with art yet. A part of me figured that that has to be some kind of sign, you know? That if I couldn't make it happen by now, it really wasn't the path meant for me. However, my stance now is that I'm going to need the universe to give me a stronger sign that I'm not meant to pursue this because I didn't waste all this time honing my skills for nothing. Needless to say, as cliche as it is, I am my own biggest critic and I don't often find myself enjoying the process behind what I make. So creating a video sort of chronicling what I like about my designs isn't necessarily hard, but it is weird. It's weird. I don't really make art for the love of it anymore. To me, art is a skill that I have that I'm trying to make into a job. I know it's kind of strange. That's why I don't resonate with the romanticized view of art. Treating art like a job has surprisingly gotten me to create more. I've drawn more stuff this past year than I have in the past couple years. Not just drawing, but I've sewn more in 2023 too. I've just overall been more creative by not trying to force myself to love what I'm doing. But it also helped that I leaned on my love of Pokemon for getting the ball rolling. Like, I don't have many videos up on my YouTube, but the last few things I've made were all weird attempts at mixing art speed paints and Pokemon Go, thinking it would both get me outside to play more and exercise and give me more inspiration for art, and it didn't do any of that. I think because at the end of the day, while I do like Pokemon Go, forcing myself to play it just never feels good. It's fun with the right group of friends, but I'd always feel FOMO from events, awful for not being able to get certain things no matter how hard I tried. It felt like a weird metaphor for my life, like no matter how hard I actually worked at something, it was always going to be just out of reach. But stuff like battling and stats and shinies, those were nice, but that was never the reason I was ever interested in Pokemon. I was always interested in the designs. I'm the person who chose Charmander because I thought Charizard was cool. I'm the person who chose to spend weeks upon weeks shiny hunting Galarian Zigzagoon because I thought those colors were sick. I'm the person that chose Team Mystic because ooh, pretty Ice Bird. When did I ever care about all that other stuff? 
but then again i'm also the person who would drive myself absolutely crazy and tank my mood by constantly playing go battle league incessantly just to try to get a slightly darker color pikachu wearing a lucha libre outfit because for some stupid reason that's the only way you can get one and despite the shiny odds being ridiculously high like apparently one in five chances but you know niantic never discloses their shiny odds so who would ever know uh, out of my four successful attempts at reaching legend rank all of those pikachus not only sucked but they were also not shiny so i'm still stuck on this never-ending grind can someone please put me out of my misery so it shouldn't be much of a surprise that the thing that really got the creative flow going was making fake mon it wasn't that i hadn't seen fake mon before I just didn't really try my hand at designing them myself until maybe two years ago with this adorable fluff ball of a Danny Phantom themed fake mon that I'll eventually make a video on. It's got a full evolutionary line, I'm just kind of stuck on the final evo. But this guy was my first foray into fake mon designing and I mean, I haven't made a lot of designs but the ones I have made have been... Okay, they've been so-so. There's a lot of designs I made that aren't that bad conceptually, but I love to sit down and give them another go at some point. And some of these that are okay, but I have no desire to redo them ever again. But some of these, some of these I absolutely nailed, and I just wanted to share a few of my favorite fake mon designs of 2023, and one that I just want to mention just because. I don't think I'm going to put them in any particular order because what I would consider my favorite will probably change at the drop of a dime. So to keep it simple, this isn't going to be in any particular order. Just know that I'm very happy with all these designs and concepts and even if I do want to redraw them later, they probably won't change that much. So starting with the one I just wanted to mention just because, I wasn't even going to mention this because I'm not going to lie, uh, the art sucks. Like, I have eyes. I know it's not good, but like, there's, there's parts, man. Like, there's parts that work and like, just let me explain. So, I am very into Stray Kids. Like, I'm not gonna say that I'm really into the K-pop scene or anything, but at first, I was really into BTS, and then I got recommended a bunch of BTS React channels, and I watched them, and those guys started reacting to Stray Kids, and then eventually I started listening to them, and that's all besides the point. This right here is Skizu my abomination of an attempt to basically combine every one of the SK Zoo mascots into one horrifically majestic amalgamation of a mythical fake mon. But like, that's hard man. Like, I tried. I think I was on this for like two days before I just settled on this and let it be. There's parts that I like. I like the tail. I kind of like the basic body shape. It just doesn't look like a Pokemon at all, and it definitely doesn't look like a mythical, and it does not combine all the mascots together well, but to be fair, trying to combine eight different animals together is just hard. Just, like, the design is trash, but I'm glad I started it, and I want to, and I will, keep workshopping this until I make it just right, and believe me, when I do, it's gonna have its own video. Besides, I mean, I call this one the charmer form, which means there's absolutely going to be a second form, which yes, I have the idea for already. I'm calling it the thunderous form because yes, that absolutely makes sense. And all the attacks are going to be based off their songs or something like, I just need to keep working on this one in my spare time because I absolutely just want to make this into some crazy awesome design that I'm proud of. Moving on. The actual first one has to be the lovely Paradox Mon, Feathered Salvation. This was the first of many fake mon I made during the Faketober challenge last year, and while I didn't complete it, I definitely made a valiant effort, and most of my favorite designs came from there. At the time, I was thinking of mixing together Zeeble Fake Mon's prompt list and a Cringetober prompt list from I Cry Inc. on Tumblr because I couldn't decide which one I wanted to do more. And this concept came to me when I saw the Angel slash Devil prompt on the Cringetober list, specifically the Angel part. To me, Mega Absol's always looked strangely angelic with its pure white feathered fur that looks like wings. It elevated Absol's already elegant stature. So, what can make Mega Absol look more angelic? How about adding in some Seraphim inspiration? Like, I'm not really well versed in actual biblical mythology, but the visual of quote unquote biblically accurate angels with their multitudes of eyes covering their bodies, specifically the visual of eyes on the wings, was the first thing I thought of and I just kind of ran with it. 
this was probably one of the fastest things I drew all year because I knew what I wanted to do with it and just went for it. And even though there's some aspects I would change, in general, I just really like how this design came together. That's it. There's not really anything more that went into the design other than that, and I just wanted to draw a more angelic Absol. But from a design that didn't really take too much thought to one that took far too much thought, Espetal. I told myself I was going to change that name, but not nah, I didn't. Espetal was a pain for multiple reasons. First of which being I have never drawn a jellyfish in my life, so trying to make a completely original looking jellyfish Pokemon that didn't look like Tentacool, Tentacruel, Toad School, Toad School, Frillish, Jellicent, or Nihiligo was going to be a problem. The second issue was that I was using this as the inspiration. Yes, I absolutely did make a Garden of Ban Ban themed Fakemon. Espetal is my version of Stinger Flynn. I legitimately want to make a whole Garten of Ban Ban fake mom video because do you know how hard it is to work with those designs? Like I feel kind of bad sort of not speaking positively about the designs and like I know designs don't really have to be complicated or anything but like these are just not good. The games intrigue me though. If not to play I'd probably be kind of bored playing them but just to watch the story of it because at this point I'm kind of in too deep and I need to know where it goes like it, the story's kind of insane but anyways Stinger Flynn was just the one character where the inspiration came naturally like you see him shoot sparks of electricity in the third game and he gives people those strange visions of you going on road trips with the rest of the game's cast and Choo Choo Charles for some reason I felt like that would translate to the psychic electric type well not sure when I'll design the rest of the Ban Ban gang, but if I do, I really hope they'll be easier than this. Probably not though. Not holding out hope for that. From one design based on a game to another design based on a better game, and one of the few designs I actually have a recording of the process of drawing, Double. Okay, let me explain the name real quick. On Instagram, there was a trend for a bit started by the amazing Fakemon artist and artist Astray to design a completely new Pokemon based on the name of an existing Pokemon. Also around this time, I was consuming way too many videos about Amanda the Adventurer and listening to CG5 song Pied Piper on repeat. Needless to say, that led to this design. This is just one of those, I want to draw this thing so I will sort of design. I wanted to make an Amanda the Adventurer themed Fakemon, and I thought that I could interpret the name Dub Wool to be Dubious Wool, so I did. That's kind of it. I did have a rough go of trying to figure out the pose and body shape. I wanted to take some aspects of Human Amanda and Demon Amanda and try to interpret them in a more Pokemon aesthetic, plus I wanted to use more wool and sheep imagery. A lot of the comments I got on this seemed to just think that this is Wooly as a demon, and I just never corrected them. One of the original theories I saw floating around about Demon Amanda's design was that all the stuff on the face weren't eyes, but it was wool that was covering her eyes. Sort of like that saying of pulling the wool over your eyes. Which in theory is nice and I dig it, but I'm pretty sure they're actually eyes. There are shots where you can see that there is some faint iris-like detail in some of the larger ones. It's just very pale and faint. Either way, I wanted to interpret it as actual wool that's covering the eyes, along with other sheep-like attributes like ears and semi-hooked feet, and the wool on the body extended to look like she's wearing a sheep's hide as a cloak. That's what I was aiming for anyways. Regardless, definitely one of my favorite designs of 2023. Even after completely scrapping the first two hours of work and completely restarting it from scratch, like this one just turned out really good. Along a similar vein to this version of Double, here's two other designs I did for the same challenge, Sableye and Lantern. And you'll probably look at the Sableye and be like, I get it. There is an animal called the Sable and this thing has prominent eyes multiple eyes and I like markings on the legs so yeah pretty obvious how I decided to interpret that name but then you might look at lantern and be like that sure was a decision and yes yes it was and it was logical hear me out the way I was interpreting lantern was lantern urn considering how the last part of the pokemon's name is spelled and for sure they gave me a ton of trouble this was my first shot as designing an object mon, and I'm not really one to draw objects in general. I put all my skill points into drawing animals, so if it's not an animal, I'm definitely going to struggle a bit, but I was kind of determined to make it work. Like, it was an idea that I thought was good and interesting, and if I didn't try, I wouldn't know if I could do it. 
So eventually I just kept trying and messing around with the vase shapes and the symmetry tool and eventually I just kind of came up with something that worked. Once I decided to not necessarily try for a literal lantern urn and instead decided to make it this broken urn where whatever's inside, if you know, if it was an actual Pokemon, it probably wouldn't be ashes. Well, whatever's inside is some possessed mass that's spilling out and from the vase's crack you can see one of its bright fiery eyes. It might not currently be a fire type, but it might become one. Also, lantern kind of sounds like land urn, and so that's why I made it a ground type. I'm not sure it makes sense to anyone else other than me, but regardless of if anyone else likes how this looks, I'll still like it because it's a pretty successful attempt at designing an object fake mon. Next up is a duo based on my main obsession in life, Detective Conan and subsequently Magic Kaito because these series are so intertwined at this point that they might as well just be the same thing. I kind of designed them because I just really wanted to make some DCMK fake mon and no one else was going to do it. I think between the two, Magaito, which is a portmanteau of Magic, Magpie, and Kaito, which means Phantom Thief, was sort of easier to tackle, I think. I at least had a better idea of where I wanted to go with the idea and Kaito Kid has a stronger design aesthetic that I could translate to a Pokemon which is why I started with what I'm calling his Moonlight form. If there's anything you're gonna have to take away from this is that I really like form changing Pokemon. Anyway, at one point I did try to come up with his normal form and just it was, it was kind of this boring black bird and that's not really what I wanted. Even the first pass at the Moonlight form was just meh. I think I stepped away from this for like a month or two, maybe more, who knows, I'm not checking. Stepped away from it, came back to it for the fairy type prompt for Fake Tober, and this time gave the pose movement that made it work so much better. The tail became the cape stand in, the chest markings and colors emulate his tie and undershirt, and the face markings and the long feather ending in the four leaf clover emulate the monocle kid wears. Overall, really like how the design came out, but I want to work on the actual stylization because it just doesn't fully feel like a Pokemon to me. Like it's all there, all the points that I want to be are there, it's just that the art style kind of falls short by a little bit and I gotta fix that. As for the counterpart that's basically supposed to be Shinichi, um, I came up with one name originally for him which was Shintarasu. I was kind of like, eh, I don't know about this name so I changed it into Shinrashiku and now I'm kind of like, wow, that name is terrible, I'm gonna go with the first one. So I'm just gonna call him Shintarasu which is a portmanteau of shinjutsu, meaning truth, tante, meaning detective, and krasu, meaning crow or raven. I think it can mean both, but I'm not sure. Unlike Magaito, I had no idea where I wanted to go with this design outside of his gimmick, which I haven't named at all, but like if he gets hit by a poison type move, instead of the possibility of getting poisoned, he just changes forms into a much smaller version of himself. Base stats would stay the same, but the physical and special attack and defense would swap. I might change the speed too, but who knows, I don't know, I'll figure it out eventually. That That's the message for all this, I'll figure it out, I'll fix it in post. Anyways, point is, I had no idea what I was doing, I kinda just made a body shape I liked, which is kind of a humanoid bird I guess. I really want to make a fully fleshed out video about these two once I make their other forms and tweak these designs before first pass, I don't think they're half bad. Definitely like Magaito more, but what I was able to do with Shintarasu was more than I thought I could accomplish and I'm happy with what I was able to do with this design at the time. And lastly, there's the design that sort of made me want to make this video in the first place. It's not this grand intricately designed creature, he's just a little guy, but like, here it is. I named it Laura Tweet at the time because, well, I was designing it for a project that sort of fell apart at the seams right before my deadline and my deadline was coming up for my part of the project and it just needed to be finished and while drawing and interpreting designs or ideas is something I'm good at, uh, naming is not, naming and storytelling are not my skills. Laura Tweet was the first name I could think of in a relatively short period of time. I'm gonna be a little upfront. I'm just a little sad the project got cancelled right before I was supposed to submit my stuff. Like I get why, but I feel like disappointment is still an appropriate feeling, so I'm gonna feel it. Anyways, even if Laura Tweet isn't my absolute favorite thing I made, 
There's a lot, I think, that I learned from being a part of the project, even if it was from a mild distance because I'm just very bad at speaking up in group discords. Specifically, I learned a lot about how I personally want to approach designing fake mon. In my part of the video that I had made about Laura Sweet, I was going to mention that I hadn't been designing fake mon for all that long. I'd only started about two years ago. I started because there was an idea that I wanted to do based on a video that I'd watched probably five or six, honestly, maybe even 70 years ago now. The time means nothing to me anymore, but I just never knew how to tackle it because I didn't know where to even start with learning to design Pokemon. Eventually I did start watching a lot of Subjectively's videos and watching their tutorials on sort of the basics of designing fake mon and really the basics of character design in general and I applied that to the design I wanted to do and I was able to do it. And watching more fake mon content and finding and learning about fan regions and the like, you see that a lot of fake mon that people create are always very inspired. They always tell a story in their design alone and that's not a bad thing. It's not. I love so many of the designs I'm thinking about when I say this, but that's where I got so stuck on this design. Because while I knew what animal I wanted to base it on, and I knew the basic colors I wanted to use, I couldn't come up with a story to tell about it. And I kept just sketching some body shapes over and over and over again, hoping that something would come to me, but in the end I couldn't think of anything more than just a basic cute bird. But that was just it. It was supposed to be a basic cute bird. So I ended up taking a day, stepping away from working on it, and not just because it was Mega Garchomp Reiki and I was absolutely going to play it to get an obscene amount of Mega Energy because the queen needed to ascend. And after doing so, I was able to come back and just draw it. Not every fake mon design has to have some intricate story. If I want to make one that's based on angels or a cartoon or an anime series or a game or something even based on some part of myself that's obviously fine but if I just sit down and say hey I want to make a random Pokemon that's based on this random obscure animal because I haven't seen it done yet or bred it yet because I want to then that's all the inspiration I need because yeah some of these other designs are definitely some of the best things I've drawn in a long time but sometimes I just want to draw a cute bird that's it nothing super detailed or anything just a bird Honestly, that'll probably be true for anything I want to make. I know that's just decent art advice. You don't need a reason or permission to make something in particular. If you want to make it, just go for it. But like, I've been struggling with art and other issues for a while, so I guess it just took until now for the message to finally sink in. There's a few other things that I made that I really liked last year, but I feel like this has kind of gone on long enough. I don't really have a solid way to end this, just I'm not gonna say I'm wholly a fake mon artist because I'm not, but I do really like designing them and I want to keep designing more. So if you want to stick around for the fake mon, I definitely appreciate it. If you want to see what art I make in general, I appreciate it. I'm the most active on Instagram and Blue Sky with my art, but like I said in my last video, I'm working towards making more videos, so if you want to keep up with that, then please subscribe. And yeah, that's about it for now. I don't really know how to end this, so I guess I'll see you all next time.